This is Precalculus chapter 11, lesson three, parabolas, on page 709. All right, so we've graphed parabolas, right? We graphed them in algebra two. Do you remember what the equation looked like? What did the equations look like that we graphed? X squared over A squared plus Y squared equals K minus Parabola. Parabola. What is a parabola? Oh, is it U? Or today we're going to have this or this. <clears throat> all right, does nobody remember what the equations look like? This is all we graphed in algebra two. The equations looked like x minus two squared plus three equals zero. I'm gonna put y. <clears throat> you remember that? Equals zero. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. <laughs> remember where the vertex was? Opposite, same. Remember. <laughs> Does it open up or down? This would open. Up because it's positive. Okay, y'all are kind of remembering <clears throat> a little bit. All right. So now let's let's remind ourselves of some things. <clears throat> y is to what power? X is to what power? squared. When y is to the first power and x is squared, it opens up or down. I'm going to give you a new formula today. <clears throat> Correct. When y is squared and x is to the first power, <clears throat> it's going to open left or right. But let's talk about what a parabola is. <clears throat> all right. A parabola is the set of all points let me just draw a parabola. That will be just helpful. It only has one focus point. Remember the focus point determines the way it curves. All right, it only has one. Remember a hyperbola and any ellipse have two, but it has something else. It's called a directrix. A directrix. And it would be where the other focus point would be. <clears throat> All right, so that this is equidistant. If that were four, then this distance would be four. <clears throat> Make sense? Equidistant. All right. We have a directrix and one focus point because if I look at that point on the parabola, this distance from here to a line perpendicular to the directrix doesn't change no matter where I'm at, right? They're always the um, equa, equa distant. They're always, the distance from X from here, even though mine doesn't look like it, okay? The distance from here to the focus point equals the distance here to the directrix. Perpendicular to the directrix. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So the distance, distance, this is the definition of what a parabola is. The distance from the focus point to a point on the curve, any point on the curve, right? To any point on the curve, curve, equals the distance from that point perpendicular to the directrix. Equals distance from the same point perpendicular to the directrix. 
That is by definition what a parabola is. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's look at the equation. I'm gonna leave this equation up here. <clears throat> so we can sort of relate our new forms of the equation to our old form of the equation. All right, so we're gonna have either up or down, or we're gonna have opens right, or left. When it opens up or down, which term is squared, x or y? X is squared. So it's x squared equals 4py. That's the equation. And we're going to talk about what 4p is in just a minute. All right, our p. If it opens left or right, what's squared? So it's y squared equals 4px. <clears throat> P is that absolute distance um, from the vertex to the focus. So P is the absolute, I'll just draw ab bars. It's the absolute distance from focus to vertex. All right, so here, if, if this is my focus point, this is P, right? I'll draw it on a graph. Let's just say here's my focus point and this is my vertex. This distance is the value of P. Got it? So if this is my directrix, if this is my directrix, then the value from the vertex to the directrix is negative P. Got it? From here to here, we go down the value of P. From here to here, we go up the value of P. Make sense? So P really tells us where our focus point is as long as we haven't shifted it up, down, left, right. Got it? P really gives us where our focus point is when the vertex is at the origin. All right, so look on the bottom of page 710. And there's some facts that are given, characteristics about a parabola when the vertex is at the origin, all right? The parabola bends towards the focus and away from the directrix. A parabola always bends toward the focus and away from the directrix. Look at the third one. The sine of P determines which way the parabola opens. If P is positive, it opens up. If P is negative, it opens down. P really dictates whether or not your parabola opens up or down. The distance from the focus point to the directrix is 2P. Just like the distance in our ellipse between the vertices was 2A, Right? <clears throat> All right. God bless you. Already said the next one, the distance from the vertex to the focus. And the distance from the vertex to the directrix is P. All right, go back to the second one. The linear term, I skipped it. The linear term, my eyes immediately went down to the third one. The linear term, what's the linear term? the one raised to the first power, right? The linear term is what dictates the orientation of the parabola and the axis of symmetry. 
Remember, all parabolas have an axis of symmetry at the vertex. If it opens up and down, it's going to be a vertical line. If it opens left and right, it's going to be a horizontal line. Remember, parabolas have symmetry. So this would be my line of symmetry, right? If I, if I graph a point over here, its distance to that axis of symmetry is the exact same distance on the other side. So I can graph the other point. Remember, we, that's how we graphed parabolas in Algebra 2. All right, look at the last one. The vertex is the midpoint of the line segment joining the directrix and the focus point. This vertex is smack dab in the middle of the directrix and the focus point. It's literally the midpoint. Make sense? Of course it makes sense, right? All right, so look at the top of the next page. <clears throat> All right, so we have opens up or down. Is x squared equals 4PY? When you have x squared, your focus point is going to be on the y-axis because it's going to open up or down. This is when it's not transformed. Even when it's transformed, x squared is going to be, you're going to draw a new imaginary um, y-axis. All right. So this will be x squared equals 4py. Your focus point is going to lie on the y-axis. So x squared, focus point on the y-axis. Got it? x squared, focus point on the y-axis. So let's just say the focus point is 0, 2. 0, 2. Then I would have a directrix at y equals negative 2. That 2 is my p-value. Got it? The 2 is my p-value. Are you with me? <clears throat> and the axis of symmetry would be the y-axis. All right, let's suppose... Let's just keep working with that. Let's suppose I said... My focus point was zero, negative two. Then what would that tell you? It opens down. My p value is negative. So my parabola is going to open down. Where is my directrix going to be at? Y equals positive two. It's just, my directrix is always at y equals the opposite of p. <clears throat> so I have a directrix now at y equals 2. Yes? Will the vertex always be at 0 unless it has a vertical shift? We're going to do vertical and horizontal shifts in lesson 4. But for now, it's going to For this be lesson, origin. it's always at the origin. This is when it's been shifted, when it looks more like that. All right. So x squared, focus point on the y-axis, and your directrix y equals the opposite of p. Got it? Got it? So far? Opens up or down, x squared, X is squared, Y is the first power. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Will you? Oh, never mind. That makes sense. <clears throat> well, okay, so the part about the directrix Y equals the opposite of negative, or the opposite, opposite of P. And yeah. And then if the Y squared equals the opposite, X, X equals, directrix X equals the opposite. Yeah, I haven't even gotten to Y squared yet. Let's just okay. lock this Y, X squared in our brains. 
Do we just have the x squareds open up and down? X is squared, focus point is on what axis? Y, directrix is what? <coughs> y equals the opposite of P, right? Got it? X squared, it opens up or down? You have to look at the value of P that tells you if it opens up or down. If P is positive, it opens up. If P is negative, it opens down. Got it? Your focus point is the value of P. It's on the Y axis. So the coordinate point is zero comma P. Got it? Your directrix is Y equals the opposite of P. Got it? All right, now, what if we have Y squared? <coughs> That is when, remember I told y'all when y is squared, it is not a function because it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. That's why our parabola is going to open left or right. Got it? Because y is squared. So now we have y squared equals 4px. Got it? All right. So if our parabola looks like this, and let's say here's our focus point on three, then our p value is, our p value is three, right? Our p value is three. Our focus point is now three, zero. Remember when x was squared, it was zero, two, If I just gave you the focus point, you should be able to tell, does it open up, down, left, or right? The focus point alone should tell you if it opens up, down, left, or right. Do you understand that? All right. So the directrix is going to be x equals what? Negative 3. Here the directrix was y equals negative two. Do you see the difference? Y is squared. The focus point is on X. The directrix is X equals. Y is squared. The focus point is on the X axis. The directrix is X equals. X is squared. The focus point is on the Y axis and the directrix is Y equals. Got it? It's the linear term that dictates where your focus point is and where your directrix is, the linear term, the one that's raised to the first power. All right, so yeah, negative three. What if I would have said my focus point is zero, negative one? Then what do you know? It opens downward. It opens <coughs> left. To the left, my focus point is here. And so what's my directrix? X equals positive one. Got it? Got it? Y is squared. P lies on the X axis. My directrix is X equals the opposite of P. Got it? X is squared. It's just like what we did in algebra two. We had quadratic formulas. My focus point lies on the Y axis. My directrix is Y equals negative P. Wouldn't that be negative one and zero? Cause like. Yes, I did that wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Negative one, zero. <laughs> Thank y'all for saying up or down. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes. All right, you got it? The X. Boom, boom. It's X. Okay. Ready to work an example? Let's do it. I'm going to leave this one on the board so we can look at it in a minute. Next lesson. I'll write it over to the side. I can make up another one. <clears throat> All 
All right. We're not going to graph any of these in our calculators. We're not, just like we did with the ellipse. The ellipse and the hyperbola. Wait, why don't we? <clears throat> okay. We're going to draw the graph. <clears throat> All right. Which term is squared? X. X. Okay, so the vertex, the focus point, the vertex, and the directrix is going to lie on what axis? Y. That's correct. Good job. So you're already thinking those things. All right. I'm going to subtract 8y on both sides. So x squared is negative 8y. <clears throat> Got it? What was the formula? x squared? 4py. What's in the place of 4p? Negative 8. Negative 8 is in the place of 4p. Right? So I just say negative 8 is 4p. I divide both sides by 4. The value of p is negative 2. Okay. How does this parabola open? It opens down. What's my focus point? Give me the coordinate point of my focus point. What is the equation of my directrix? Um, y equals two. Got it? <coughs> okay. I already know the vertex hadn't been moved left or right. <coughs> I know my directrix is here. It almost looks like an asymptote. And my focus point is at negative two. There's my focus point. And I know it opens down. That's a rough sketch of that. I could pick a couple of points. Like I could go back to the original equation and let's say for x, I picked um, negative 2. So are you always going to substitute in, like, when you're your pencil line, you're going to put in for x? I could put in for y. But typically, if it opens up or down, x is your independent variable, y is your dependent variable. When we have a function, x is your independent, y is your dependent. So when x is negative 2, what's the value of y? Negative one half. You agree? Because negative two squared is positive four. Positive four divided by negative eight is? Negative four. All right, so I didn't do a very good job of drawing this. There is negative two. Well, maybe I did not so bad. It's a little wider than I drew. I, I could then say, okay, well, let's just say this, yeah. Anyway, this is one half. Right, I go equidistant on the other side. <clears throat> because if x equals two, it's the same value, right? Yes. So how'd you get those points again? I just chose a value for x and solve for y. All right. <clears throat> We're not going to graph these on our calculator, but let's look at the next example. Example two. <clears throat> All right. Automatically, you should know what, what happens. It opens right or left because y is squared. It is not a function. Not a function. All right. 12. 12 is in the place of 4p. 4p. So 12 equals 4p dividing both sides by 4. What's the value of p? Mm -hmm. So what how does it open? Positive 
right. to the right that is correct. All right, so what is my coordinate point for my focus point? It's three zero. It's three zero. My directrix is? X equals negative three. X equals negative three. You with this, Jay? Excellent, okay. All right, so this is negative three. That's my directrix. Here is three, that's my focus point. I could pick points, but we're gonna do rough graphs, rough sketches. Got it? Make sense? All right. That's right. The first two are always the easiest two, right? All right, look at example three. <clears throat> it says find the focus point. Okay, let me just write some notes so that I know what we're finding. We're gonna find the focus point. We're gonna find the focus point, the directrix, and the equation, all right? E is for equation. Of a parabola, that passes through negative one square root of 12. That's my X value, that's my Y value. All right. Has a vertex of zero, zero, and its focus, focus point is on the X axis. If the focus point is on the X axis, then what's my um, equation? y squared equals 4 p x 4 p x all right so how are we going to figure this out how are we going to get the equation we're going to do what what x and y the non-zero one. I'm gonna plug this in for X, that in for Y. All right, so it's the square root of 12 squared equals four P times negative one. What's the square root of 12 squared? 12 equals negative four P. Then what do I do? Divide by negative four. What's the value of P? So what's my focus point? And the directrix is? X, X equals three. All right, how does it, what's the equation? Y squared equals negative three X negative three. Well, it's gonna be four times P X. So it's Y squared equals negative 12 X. Got it? That's the equation. All right, now how are we gonna graph this? How does it open? To the left, that is correct. I almost wanted to do the song. To the left, to the left. <laughs> what do they call that? Is that the Cupid Shuffle? Is that the name of that one? Yes. <clears throat> There's so many different line dances. Okay, here's our directrix. That's our focus point. Look, I have a point. What's square root of 12? It's more than three. What's the square root of 12 as a decimal, somebody? Square root of 12 is a decimal. <clears throat> so almost like three and a half. So when it goes to negative one, it goes to like three and a half. Wow, that's gonna be a real fat one. Negative one, we'll go down here. All right, that's because that focus point is so far away. All right, there we go, rough draft. Very, very rough draft. Okay, let's just read through the next one. I wasn't gonna do this one, <clears throat> but let's read through it. Okay, 
a radio telescope. <clears throat> All right, everybody got this. Everybody has example three. Got it? <clears throat> All right. A radio telescope in the very large array of Socorro, New Mexico, shown in the figure, has the shape of a par parabolic dish. <clears throat> it is approximately 12 feet deep in the center. Okay, I'm just going to draw it. So this is like 12 feet deep in the center. That makes me think that's got to be my P value. That's what it makes me think, okay? At its center. And has a diameter, that's the distance, of 82 feet. So this has got to be 41 feet. That's 41 feet. All right, so what I'm thinking. How far from the vertex of the parabolic dish should the receiver be placed in order to catch all the radio waves? Well, that's correct. The only way that you would know it is the focus point is where the radio waves are going to reflect to. Okay, so it's the focus point. <clears throat> All right. So we don't know that the focus point is right there. We don't know that that is P. This is the dish. It's kind of hard to realize that's the dish. But if I drew it on the XY coordinate, so we would have this, this would be at 41, this point would be at negative 41, and this, well, I didn't do a very good job, is 12, so that this would be 41, 12, and this would be negative 41, 12. So it does give us two points on the parabola so that we could find the focus point. <clears throat> All right? So I'm going to erase this one that I drew without. <clears throat> All right. So what's my equation for this? X squared. Equals? Four. All right. So I want to know the focus point. Substitution, x and y. All right, x is 41 equals 4p, 12 squared. What's 41 squared? 1681. What's 4 times 144? I didn't mean that. Okay, never mind. What's 4 times 12? It's 48. Thank you. 48p. Now I divide by 48. What's the value of P? Thirty-five. So about 35. And what are our measurements in? Feet. So it's about 35 feet from the vertex. Is where the... Go back to the image is where this tip needs to go. Wait, so are there going to be something like in the air? Well, this really is a satellite dish. Is the, is the little white thing that thinks can hold up? Like yeah, this is. This has to be placed at the focus point. Okay, y'all didn't know that precalculus was used for that, did you? Nope. 